We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over into the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The seven words. The first word, the word of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was like a lamb to the slaughter, and like a sheep before its shears is silence. So he did not open his mouth. He poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. A reflection on the first word. It's hard to imagine what our Lord must have been feeling as he was brought to a very hard place. Hard not only because it was made out of rough wood, but hard knowing what would happen to him. And the first thing he does is something that seems entirely beyond our understanding. For he forgives the people who are crucifying him, even as the nails are being hammered into his hands, even as he is being lifted up into the sky. Indeed, his seven words begin with a word of love and forgiveness. And we too, if we follow Christ, should love and forgive one another. For God has loved and forgiven us so much, certainly through our Lord and Savior, but each and every day of our lives. We extinguish one candle as Jesus forgives those who crucify him. The second word, the word of assurance. Today you will be with me in paradise. I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. A reflection on the second word. Even as our Lord is dying upon the cross, he reaches out with love to those who are around him. We're told that there were two criminals that were crucified with him, two thieves, perhaps more than thieves, who had lived sordid lives, who were distant from God, and yet one, one recognized who our Lord was, recognized his noble bearing, his innocence, and so he placed him in himself and his future in God's hands. Remember me when you come into your kingdom, he said, to which our Lord answered, Today you will be with me in paradise. One of the things that can get us through the difficult parts of life is knowing that if we follow in the path of Christ, we are assured of what was given to the good thief. That if we follow in Christ's path today, we will be with him one day in paradise. It's a good thing to remember, especially in difficult times. We extinguish a second candle as Jesus looks toward heaven. The third word, the word of comfort. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. Dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil men have encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one who men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Even as Jesus is being crucified, his life is leaving his body. He reaches out in love to his mother. 
placing her in the strong and able hands of a beloved disciple. How good it is to know that even in suffering, we can reach out to others in love. We can remember that even as our life perhaps is passing, we have an obligation to reach out to others, to make sure they are safe and whole. I hope that wherever you are, you're continuing to reach out to those people around you and that you're providing for them so that as time goes by, they will be safe and whole also. We extinguish a third candle as Jesus remembers his sorrowful mother. The fourth word, the word of desolation. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Sababathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry out by day and you do not answer, by night and am not silent. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our inequities. Punishment that brought us peace upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. A reflection on the fourth word. In some ways, in some ways it's hard to imagine Jesus saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because certainly Jesus, certainly he knew that God loved him. His Father in heaven loved him. Why cry out this thing? Why say aloud what something would, that sounds wrong even in his heart? How can he do this as the Son of God? My sense is that the human Jesus, the Jesus who knew our suffering and pain, the Jesus who slept and groaned and ate and was frustrated by the world as perhaps it was yet reached out and loved that Jesus, that human Jesus, understood what it was to be forsaken by God, even though he was the Son of God. And so with his words, we hear our own voice calling out to God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He says for us, us those things that we say Sometimes in our lives, when we feel God is far away from us. But God is not far away. And perhaps the only thing that blocks out the face of God is the sin of the world. Perhaps it is that sin which makes God seem far away. Perhaps wherever you are in your life, you felt God far away at times. And yet he's as close as a prayer. He's closer than your skin. He's there with you and for you, as the Father was with the Son, even upon the cross. We extinguish a fourth candle as Jesus calls out to his heavenly Father. The fifth word, the word of suffering. Jesus said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength has dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. A reflection on the fifth word. Jesus suffers in his body. I suppose it should come as no surprise that a man hanging upon a, a cross should, should wish to drink. One who is even the source of living water should be thirsty in order to fulfill a prophecy. There are times in our lives when we do feel thirsty, much like our Lord. Perhaps we're not close to death as he was, but water seems far away. And the living water of Christ seems so very far away. And yet it can be so close at hand. There are times when we doubt our faith. 
There are times when our humanity gets in the way of following Christ. There's times when we doubt that God is near and that only death surrounds us. Let us give thought to our Lord's suffering. Let us give thought to those around us who may be suffering. As we extinguish a fifth candle, Jesus draws near death. The sixth word, a word of triumph, Jesus then said, it is finished. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told of the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. It is finished. That is a statement of someone who has done everything that has been necessary and is in some ways pleased that it is done. I tend to think that any good workman, any good wife, any good person, when you complete something, would almost joyously say, it is finished. It is done. How much more it must have given some joy to our Lord, even as death was nearby, to say that he had done all that had been required of him, that he had saved the world or was in the process of doing so by his own death. It is finished. I am done. This earthly life with its pain, with its joy, it is all done. What a gift to give to God the Father, to place upon his hands a ministry which was full and rich, a ministry of salvation to the world, love revealed in one crucified. It is finished. We extinguish a sixth candle as Jesus knows his mission here on earth is complete. And now the seventh word, the word of commitment. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. You that fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. A reflection on the seventh word. When all was finished, Jesus gave to his father the last piece, his very soul. The soul that had been given to him at birth, he gave back to his father. All that he had in this world was done. All his work was finished. And so he gave to his father the last piece of his life. His very soul. How good to know that as time goes by and perhaps our life draws to a conclusion, we can give, we can give God the last piece ourselves. We can place our soul carefully into his hands for safekeeping and know that all that we have done, all that we have done well and done poorly, we can trust with God and in his hands, knowing that he is far fairer than we are that he knows us better than we know ourselves. We can trust in him and know with certainty if we give to him all that we have, he will bless us. We extinguish a seventh candle as Jesus dies and his body is now entombed. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world.